Welcome to my cut and sew neck tutorial video. I'm going to show you how to do an industrial um, cut and sew. This method is done entirely on the machine. As you can see, I'm just holding up a sample now which has been overlocked. Now you don't have to overlock it, but you can um, use a sewing machine with a zigzag or stretch stitch. Uh, with an overlocker you can see that the overlocking is, is um, slightly wider than it would be when you're done on the sewing machine and you do have to take account of this when looking at your neckline. So first things first, you need to figure out how wide your neck should be and to do this I just hold it up against the machine. Now this is roughly 25 stitches either side of zero. Now you can measure it with the ruler and hold the ruler up to the machine to be a bit more accurate but I've always found this method to be very valid. So I'm just getting my needles into the normal working position. Now I'm going to knit my inner band which is um, what enables us to encase the raw edge on the machine. I'm going to do a weaving cast on but you can cast on whichever way you want um, and this is going to be with waste yarn. Just doing my first few rows. Now I'm just going to hang some weight. I'm just knit a few rows more. Right, end on the left, cut the yarn or I'll just um, break it. And then I get a ravel cord and I'm going to knit one row with the ravel cord. Find it easiest if you're knitting on a brother machine to attach the ravel cord to the clip on the underside of the ribber. Now I'm going to get the uh, main yarn and knitting at main tension which will be 6 in this case um, because I'm knitting with 4 ply yarn and I'm going to knit 7 rows at main tension. Now the amount of rows you knit on this section and the next section will all depend on how much uh, of an encasement you want over your edge and how wide the edge that you're encasing is. I found that 7 and 6 for the neckline that I'm doing and the way I overlock my neckline is sufficient. If you do too few rows it can be a bit tight and it bunches up a bit. So I'm just knitted one more row with a ravel cord. And now I'm going to knit a few more rows of waist at main tension. Try not to get your ravel cord tangled like I've done here. Fortunately we all make mistakes. Just remove that from the machine. Now we're going to place this to one side, and now we take our main piece and wrong side facing, we're going to hang, pick up. Well, underneath um, the bottom row of stitching. So if you're doing a zigzag, it'll be just below the zigzag. But if you're um, overlocking, it'll be just beneath the row of overlocking. Apologies here, I got the camera angle slightly wrong.
just evenly pick up all the stitches along the whole neck line and you just want to go just uh, just literally underneath all your machine stitching Now you want all the latches to be open for the next stage because now you're going to get the top row of stitches from your sample. This is why I knit in two different colours of Ravel cord. So basically the last row you knitted we're going to pick up now. I'm just going to get the first few stitches onto my transfer tool. Now it's important to note at this stage not to remove the ravel cord until you're about to close your encasement with um, a row of knitting, which we won't be doing for a few more stages. So at the moment just leave the, um, the ravel cord in the waist where it is because if you make any mistakes it can easily be corrected but if you um, take the ravel cord out you can easily drop a stitch and have to start the whole process again sometimes it's easier picking these up one at a time at this stage Right, now you've picked up all those stitches, they're, they're, they're lying in the open latches, you want to make sure those latches are still open, but now what we're going to do is take the 1-1 transfer tool and push all those latches closed. You can do this with a credit card to be a bit easier, but it is doable with the transfer tool, and now pressing down the latches, I'm just going to push all those needles back, making sure that the latches remain closed. and then we're literally going to pull all the stitches through the main piece so you've got a nice row of stitches right at the back there if any of them have been missed you can easily just pick them up again and then and then place them on the needle uh, go through and place them on the needle now just to make this a bit easier um, I'm just going to bring all those needles forward and it just means that 
when the sinker plate goes across it doesn't inadvertently knit any of the threads from the cut and sew neckline which you really don't want and then just knit a row across and we're going to knit six rows now it's always one row less on this section than it was on the first and now we're going to pick up the first row onto all the same needles now this should be a lot easier once you get the first couple of stitches on than it was in the section before Get that first stitch. And away we go. Now when you place these stitches on, this is actually enclosed the raw edge of your neckline between two sections of stocking stitch and when you knit the next row that will enclose the edge completely Be good to discuss at this point that you can knit whatever neckline you want from this stage forward and you could um, just knit some plain stocking stitch and have a rolled stocking stitch neck or my preferred neckline is a 1-1 one -one rib and I'll show you how to transfer to the ribber to do that. should have one stitch less in this section and I usually leave the last but one stitch empty but do, do bring it forward excuse my hairs this section, I'm sorry about the camera angle. So this is the time when we remove the waste, uh, waste yarn, so take the ravel cord out. And just make sure there's no dropped stitches on either end. The other ravel cord. Again, check the stitches. Then knit one row at main tension. Now we're going to squeeze all the piece and all the ends between the beds now we're going to bring the ribber up but before that we change the sinker plates over for the ribber sinker plate I've always thought the beauty of this 
neckband is that it's all done on the machine so there's no sewing up after to do at all so what I'm doing now is I'm bringing every other needle into working position on the river and I'm going to transfer every other stitch onto those needles to go on then to do a 1-1 one, one rib I'm pulling down with my left hand on one piece to make it a bit easier to do this bit so it is a little bit slower doing it one handed. You always have one more stitch if you're going to use an even number of needles either side of zero. So I just reduce one on the right hand side. And then I'm going to set up my carriage for knitting a rib, which is 2 2 and slide lever at 1 for a 4 ply yarn. And then pull down a lot, like hold the whole lot of knitting as you go across, and this is what's going to give us the weight and then just knit across one row I'm knitting a 10 row rib for this so what I'm going to do is knit the first 7 rows reason for this is because we're going to latch off this rib to cast off we need it to be as loose and elastic as possible because normally we would enable this by using the cast on with the ribber um, but in this case we're doing it in reverse so what I'm doing now is I've just reduced it um, by three numbers so I've gone up to five, five and knitted two rows and now I'm going up to eight, eight and knitting one row and now I'm going to cut the yarn and just take off take it off on waist Make sure you really do hold on to that piece because it will need the extra weight because you're knitting at a very loose tension at this point. And just remove it from the machine. Now you see you've got that lovely closed up edge which is really neat and professional. Now, when we latch off, you, you go the opposite end to the end of yarn. I'm just going to show you very quickly. You need to get your latchet tool.
and apologies, you just can't see this section. I've totally misjudged the angle of the camera. Well, I hope you enjoyed the rest of this tutorial anyway, and that it was helpful. Um, many thanks for watching, and I'll maybe do another tutorial um, showing the latching off of the neckline. You see it a bit more there. What I'm trying to show you is you basically latch off um, each stitch. So you knit, latch off one knit stitch, then one purl stitch, and so on across the whole piece. Try and do it as loosely as you can, because this is going to be um, the open edge of the neckline. And you need it to have as much give as you can.